Next, we look at the documentary that The Washington Post is calling the most inspiring journalism movie maybe ever. Writing with Fire follows a fearless group of journalists from India's most marginalized class. They are the Dalits and their fight to maintain India's only women-led news outlet. Five years in the making for the award-winning filmmakers Rintu Thomas and Shushmit Ghosh. They join Hari Srinivasan to discuss the project and what it reveals about relentless gender and caste discrimination in India. Christian, thanks. Rintu Thomas, Sushmit Goth, thank you both for joining us. Um, Rintu, start by telling us the context in which this newspaper or website, Cover Laharia, works and why it's so different that it's run by Dalit women. India's news landscape is usually uh, manned by or dominated by men. Um, and mostly dominant cast men in most of our newsrooms. It's dominant cast men who make decisions around what is the news um, that that should be prioritized. So you see a lot of mainstream media reflecting uh, the priorities of that demographic of people. And when we zoom into a space like Uttar Pradesh, which could be a country in itself, um, the, the rural media landscape is again dominated by the same profile. And so in these parts to be a woman journalist uh, as a rural woman journalist was, was sort of like unheard of and so what Khabarleria is doing is breaking a huge glass ceiling both in terms of women as journalists as rural reporters but also Dalit women who are visibilizing themselves uh, uh, negotiating a seat at the table and and putting out a newspaper which is uh, entirely independent and has a femi feminist lens and I think for all those who are operative words, this is a very unique uh, news outlet. So, Schmidt, what, what drew you to this? I mean, this website and this paper had existed before. How did they come to be in the first place? So, they were a social experiment, really. 2002, an NGO came in with a grant, said, you know, working with women in rural areas in Uttar Pradesh, what would your newsletter look like was the brief to them. And essentially, these women for six months designed, co-created their own newsletter and ended up distributing it in the spaces that they were in. Once the grant ended, the NGO was pulling out. The women had tasted blood and it was just like, we want to continue. And some folks from um, the NGO and the women who were working at the newsletter eventually went on to birth Cover Leheria, which became a newspaper. Uh, I think what attracted us was we caught this at a time where they were transitioning from print to digital. So, you know, the forces of patriarchy and the caste system, 3,000 years old, and, you know, the unfettered energy and the power of the internet colliding, anchored in the stories of Dalit women journalists in some of the most difficult parts of India to report from, was a natural draw for us. I want to play a little clip here. This is a scene with Sunita in it, and she is coming over to cover a story about uh, a road project that has not happened. So uh, let's take a quick click. <laughs> हमें सारी जानकारी चाहिए जो इस रास्ते से लेकर के दिखते होती है तुमको बताइए पहले पत्रकार कौन से हैं चैनल वाले खबर लहरिया से हैं चैनल वाले हैं मैं आपको बताऊं खबर लहरिया से हैं वो पेपर भी है और चैनल भी है तो जो चैनल है वो आपको YouTube में मिलेगा और जो पेपर है वो आपको साप्ताहिक मिलेगा जी आपकी मांग नहीं है कि आपको यहां आने के लिए न्यूज़ अगर बनानी है तो आपको गाड़ी चलनी चाहिए आपको नहीं नहीं मेरी नहीं है क्योंकि मैं तो अक्सर पैदल चलती हूं ओके आप मीडिया के अंदर जाने के पता है आपको क्या रूल होते हैं क्या नियम कानून होते हैं इसलिए हमसे उतनी ही बात करी जितना समझ में और हमारी डिमांड केवल एक है की इसको बीच वाले पेज में छापने हाथ जोड़ बोल इसको मेन पेज तो मैं आपको एक चीज बता दूं जो आप कह रहे हैं जो आप, आप बोलेंगे मेन पेज का खर्चा लगता है बिल्कुल नहीं बिल्कुल नहीं क्योंकि जो खबर लिखनी होती है उसमें पैसा नहीं लगता है पैसा आप लोग लेते होंगे मैं वही बोल रही हूँ कि आपको लगता होगा ना मुझे नहीं लगता है मेन फ्रंट पेज पे छापने के लिए मुझे कोई पैसा नहीं देना पड़ता है मुझे जो सिर्फ खबर देनी पड़ती है की वो खबर लगाने लायक है फ्रंट पे या नहीं है difficult for me to figure out is is it harder being a woman 
a Dalit or a reporter, because you can see that man, for example, turning around and saying, no, 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 you know, you should sort of know your place or just, you know, speak with what you know about. And it was kind of uh, definitely condescending to her. But what was fascinating was that she was in what would be to any journalist, a sticky situation where she's got sources who are, don't find, she's certainly not welcoming of her, but she is negotiating this to get her story. So for context, if you're Dalit, you're at the bottom of India's social hierarchy. And then add to that the weight of being a Dalit woman. I don't think it gets much lower than that. The journalists in Kabul area are the first women journalists in the region. And so people are not used to seeing Dalit women with smartphones challenging them about accountability and budgetary sort of like, you know, demands and essentially in enforcing some kind of transparency. They're more used to having them ordered to clean their toilets. Historically, that's how it's been. Uh, so, so I think the women have really inverted a 3,000-year-old caste hierarchy on, their, on its head just by picking up cheap Chinese smartphones, accessing the internet, and delivering authentic news. People really want to see news, and Kabbalah area is delivering it. And I think it's a global phenomenon that more and more mainstream news networks are becoming sort of echo chambers. And over here, you have a platform fa platform like Khabar Lahiriya that is actually giving you something that is authentic, that is real, and that is enforcing transparency. And you can see that in the film, roads getting built, hospitals, access to healthcare, so on and so forth. Rinta, essentially men are, well, mansplaining what journalism should be or how these women should be. But I wonder how the community thinks about Kabar Laharia and these women because they're actually getting changes to happen. You know, the women are very acutely aware that they're moving in spaces where they're not very, very welcome. Um, which are in dial and sometimes when we used to be filming, Mira and I, or the journalists and I were the only women uh, in in a crowded public uh, space or, uh, or or a bureaucrat's office or a politician's office. It's it's very visually, you know, you you you're the only woman and. And so they're very aware of that. They've they've done this for for 19 long years now, and their strategy is to get the job and leave. And if it's in terms of interviewing skills, it means you're going really, you know, intelligent, and you go point by point. You you point to the facts, and really, it's a masterclass in in seeing how to negotiate with people who you don't necessarily agree with. Um, and and yet get your story out because that's the focus. And with male journalists, it's mansplaining, or uh, sometimes being a lot of condescension. And I think I love Sunita for this because her she's got this um, really lovely, uh, comfortable relationship with the men. She jokes around with them. She's really comfortable with the policemen. So she gets her beats done, uh, uh, hitches a, a, a ride with a, a fellow male journalist, sometimes might share a story, mostly doesn't. So I think it's it's really, she understands you, you accept that and then you transcend. I think that's their strategy. I want to play a little clip here. It's a teaching scene. And I think one of the things that we take for granted is the transformative capacity and capability of what a single smartphone can do. ये वाला है ये है ये नहीं फिर आई ये वाली ये बिंदी जो लगी है डंडा लगा है अभी एक बार बनाई थी जब गलत हो गया अब तुम डॉट लगाओ ठीक है और ये कहे एक तन के सब अच्छा रहा है हां तो वो तो मैं ढूंढना आप जो है ना चलो मैं इंग्लिश जिनको इंग्लिश के अक्षर नहीं पहचानना आता है उनको एक घंटे की पढ़ाई करनी डी इसको बोलेंगे क्या वो भी मैं लिखती जा रही हूं हां पूरी लिखना है रिंतु टेल अस अ लिटिल बिट अबाउट मीरा वी सी हर इन द क्लिप व्हेयर शी इज टीचिंग फोल्क्स बट uh, what's her story? Mira was um, married at the age of 14. She um, loved studying, so she fought to continue her study even after her marriage, even after she had her first child. And uh, at that moment for her, it was not journalism. She just needed a job. And when she got to know about Khabar Lahiriya banding together, she joined them and the financial independence. 
allowed her to continue her education she goes on to do her ma uh, ba and an ma and she's a very natural leader uh, she's the person who was taking the whole organization on on this new journey towards digital and what we really loved about her is is the sense of compassion and patience as a boss as a colleague um you know never losing sight of the last person in the room who's the slowest and that's really the in an expansive way the contribution of khabalaria and the fact is that to tell a woman who has nobody believing in her that i believe in you come along we can go this far is 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 phenomenal can have a phenomenal impact and that's who mira really is and and that's what drew us to her Rintu, what you do really well in the film also is show that while they're doing this by day, that they're going back to households and families who are still so deeply ensconced in the social structure that they have to navigate and negotiate things with their husbands, with their dads on why they're out late, why they're doing this, whether this job is still worthwhile, right? So like, the, here's the entire audience of the film watching this going, oh my gosh, these are amazing women journalists. And here they are going back home and having to have these conversations to justify what it is that they're doing and how. This film made me uh, uh, completely believe in something that I've always known, that empowerment is actually a journey and, and not a destination. uh there are and it is this negotiation that we were most interested in um and and uh, i think we were very fortunate to get this kind of access and trust of the women to be in their personal spaces we were interested in seeing if there is a disagreement between mira and her husband how does she how does she position herself how does she articulate um her her dissonance with with what he feels and what are the conversations that she's having with her girls and with the financial independence that that this profession um allows them these women are now decision makers in their families and that's the thing right we see women as service providers in our homes but but in terms of who they are what their intellect is what their spirit is most of the times we we are disconnected from that i mean i only discovered my mother much later in my life for me she was just like only a mother figure not not a person with a history and this discovery is what we wanted to imbue the film with because we really hope when people watch this film they they're able to imagine their mothers and sisters uh, and wives and daughters differently and that's why this 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 tussle between a woman who's tasted freedom and independence and liberty and yet feels connected to you know the pull of to being a good daughter am i being a good wife and in in some of them like mira there is absolute clarity yes i am spending all my day working hard making sure i can send my children to a good english medium school so yes i cannot spend time on their homework and that's okay because i'm supporting them so that kind of clarity is really admirable uh, also for me it's i mean a lot of unlearning for me as well uh so shmith there's a lot of also what we would consider high end journalism conversations about kind of the role of the press and what are the norms and what are the expectations and what is fairness and really like at the core in some ways this is just as much of a a story to me about sort of democracy and freedom of speech of articulation it's so kind of a universal all of the stresses that journalism is facing today about traffic and page views and everything else they're thinking about all these things but they're also thinking about the very core root of what it means to do this profession yeah i i think it's also yeah. deeply linked to the cover area ethos where they believe in the values of equity dignity justice and just this sharp understanding of what is news making supposed to be and i think more importantly there are a great example of what happens when you end up diversifying the newsroom when news is not managed and controlled by middle aged upper caste men but you have women from the other end of the spectrum reporting on what's happening in the country and the lens with which and the politics with which um they are bringing these stories out to the country and you see that in scenes in the film uh, what is the meaning of an angle uh, from whose perspective should you tell the story and just the ethics of moving through a space that has witnessed trauma or can be very hostile how do you navigate and negotiate with people who don't agree with you 
it's a classic example of 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 a newsroom that should be studied by other newsrooms um uh, it's an example of uh, what really news can be uh, so shmit this film is opening around the united states but it has not yet opened in india and i wonder if when you think about how it's going to roll out i mean india since 2014 i think more than 40 journalists have been killed it's one of the toughest places to be a journalist and not everybody in the country is going to see that the, the work that these women do as something to be celebrated and i i don't know if that's a conversation you've had with them or how you're thinking about it and do you what do you think the reception is going to be in india we are hoping to bring the film uh back home to india next year and i think that our our positioning on this is this is not an anti anything film this is a pro justice film this is a pro democracy film and if you truly believe in those values then you will align yourself with the message of the story which is essentially everyone deserves to live a life of dignity and over here uh the people who are spotlighting that are dalit women uh and these women are showing you what true journalism and what true courage really means and for us they represent really the best that india has to offer the world so we must celebrate them and that's essentially the message and we're very hopeful that uh, the indian audience will will absorb the story like that and celebrate the women at khabar lehria the way they have been uh, by people across the world so spread gosh rintu thomas thank you both for joining us Thanks Thank so much Harit.